for the second time in this series, we are visiting South America, a land where caimans rule the freshwater habitats of the Amazon basin. Today we will be discussing Paleosuchus, a primal name for a truly awesome group of crocodilians. The modern genus of Paleosuchus features two living species, the Cuvius dwarf caiman and Schneider's smooth-fronted caiman. Paleosuchus are members of the large subfamily Caymanae, which comes under the family Alligatoridae. It is speculated that they split off from other caimans around 30 million years ago. Their more ancient and distinct features give them the unique name Paleosuchus, meaning ancient crocodile, which would explain their stark differences from other members of the subfamily. For example, while other Caymanae members have five teeth on their premaxillary jaw, Paleosuchus have four teeth. This is one of the main ways they can be distinguished from their relatives. Anyway, now let's learn about these two captivating crocodilians. Cuvier's dwarf caiman is the smallest species of crocodilian in the world, with Schneider's smooth-fronted caiman coming in at a close second. Land-dwelling more than most caimans, this animal is known to cover great distances terrestrially at night. They share many interesting parallels with the dwarf African crocodile, being mainly nocturnal, solitary, and also possessing an enigmatic quality in comparison to their landmark cousins such as the alligator or black caiman. Ignoring these similarities, they are not at all related. Males of the species grow to a maximum length of 1.6 meters, while females don't exceed 1.2 meters. The individuals are usually solitary or live in pairs. During mating season, they usually will unite into small groups. Cuvius dwarf caiman mainly feed on fish, crustaceans, mollusks, and carrion. Their bodies are less hydrodynamic than other crocodilians. With a long, narrow skull built for crushing prey with their strong jaws. Strong jaws make up for the fact Paleosuchus cannot death roll, being one of the only species that does not do this. Since these animals are so small, they do have predators. Some freshwater birds are known to eat infants of Cuvier's dwarf caiman. The anaconda and boas also make quick meals of these animals, both young and adult. Finally, the iconic big cat, the jaguar, also hunts these reptiles, as well as many other larger caimans. Bony armoring may compensate for their small body size to prevent predation from this long list. Juveniles have black stripes along their body with a brown basal coloration. Adults on the other hand develop a dark brownish body and a lesser brown head. The eyes always have a pretty chestnut color. Breeding in Cuvius dwarf caiman is not fully understood with it being agreed upon that they do not breed seasonally. The females will bury the fertilized eggs similarly to most caimans and crocodiles, in order to protect them from predators. The 10 to 25 eggs are buried in vegetation in order to maintain a stable temperature to survive. Gender is likely dependent on temperature, like other crocodiles, but this is yet to be proven. After 90 days of incubation, the eggs will hatch, with the infants being covered in mucus, which may be used to prevent algal growth. After they have dried, the infants will enter the water, with their mothers staying with them for a few weeks. The continued hunting of these animals causes regional extinction and an overall slight decline in their population of an estimated 1 million individuals has happened over the last 200 years. These animals still seem to be doing pretty well though, and are still very common. Due to this, Cuvier's dwarf caiman is classified as least concern. Hopefully this crocodile will continue to thrive into the future. And with that, we move on to the other species of Paleosuchus, Schneider's smooth-fronted caiman. The main way to distinguish the smooth-fronted caiman from its more widespread relative, the Cuvier's dwarf caiman, is the scale arrangement or scutulation. Their ranges do overlap in the Orinoco and Amazon basins. Schneider's smooth-fronted caiman is 2.3 meters in length, while Cuvier's dwarf caiman is 1.4 meters in length, making it on average far larger than its relative. The larger size of these animals means being hunted is less of a problem for them. Jaguars will still sometimes prey upon them. This animal has a smoother fronted skull, which of course is hinted at by its name. A more prominent ridge on its eyes can also be found. 
and their diets are slightly different, with Schneiders eating more terrestrial prey such as snakes once fully grown. Finally, it tends to move far less, staying near main streams, while its relative spends more time in flooded forests. They lay fewer eggs than their relative, around 10 to 15, with a longer incubation period of 115 days, with females usually staying nearby. The hatchlings need assistance when escaping their nests, making a female a far more claws on approach as a parent. See what I did there? After being transported to a nursing area, the young will eventually leave. The larger size of smooth fronted caimans seems to have impacted when they reach sexual maturity. While the average Cuvier's dwarf caiman reaches sexual maturity at 8, the average female smooth fronted caiman reaches sexual maturity at around 11 years old, and males at about 20. There are many more potential fossil species that may be added to this genus in the future, so this video is subject to change as always. I'd like to say a massive thank you to Polish Wolf Walker for contributing all of the photos of Paleosuchus that you've seen in this video. Without him, this video would not have been possible, and they are truly a legend. Go follow them on Utah and whatever other platforms they've linked. Thank you to everyone who is continuing to support the channel, thank you for 800 subscribers. I'm sorry if uploads have been slowing down a bit, I've been dealing with a lot of burnout at the moment, but this series and writing it and editing it has just been a massive passion project for me. Crocodiles and caimans and alligators and gharials and false gharials and all of that are such amazing animals, and without you guys I wouldn't be able to make these videos on them. I'd like to thank my Patreon, Goji Berry, Complete Legend, and just everyone else who has supported this channel over all of this time. So please, if you'd like to, like and subscribe, and just enjoy the videos on this channel. Goodbye for now.